I'm a psychologist and I work from, uh, from the theory of uh, John Bowlby. He made the attachment theory. And uh, he says that uh, attachment is a neurological system which uh, we are born with. All mammals have it. If you look at uh, gorillas in a zoo, you will see that the mother is carrying the baby on the body all the time. Maybe the reason we got civilized is because we were able to stand on two feet and carry our babies. So what Malpe says is that uh, we have a neurological system which starts after birth and it is started by touch and that is the attachment system. When a mother has a baby and puts it on the stomach, uh, the baby's attachment system will start and the mother's attachment system will start. So you see a lot of problems in mothers who were not allowed to touch their babies after birth because that gives trouble with the attachment system. Maybe she does not uh, feel anything for it or the baby does not uh, get attached to her. So physical uh, separation for long periods is uh, very dangerous for feeling attached to each other, for bonding. Yes. <clears throat> and you can see in the, if you look at the children I work with in orphanages who are not uh, touched by anyone, they don't attach to anyone. And uh, when they grow up, they might become uh, psychopathic because they don't know how to attach. You can also, uh, that's uh, Balbi is one angle, but you can also see in uh, neurology, if you deprive children of touch, for example, put them in a bed and uh, don't contact them, like you do in orphanages, uh, their brains uh, stop developing. Uh, from you are born until you are two years old, you should make millions of connections in your brain. But you only do this if somebody touches you. So the brain has a whole system which depends on being touched by uh, the caretaker. Okay, is it? If you look at uh, the attachment system, it is most active from the day you are born until you are about two years old. For example, if you place babies in foster families before they are two years old, they will usually attach very well to the foster mother. So it doesn't have to be the biological mother, but someone has to be a parental figure who touches you and loves you and so on. If you place children in foster families after they are two years old, uh, they will probably uh, keep contacting the way they did um, when they were in their dysfunctional family. That doesn't mean that they cannot recover, but uh, the way they contact other people and their social abilities will always be a little colored by uh, the problems they had when they were babies. So uh, the sooner you do something, that's why, uh, you know, I made the First Start program which is an education program uh, and virtual internet. I do it in connection with uh, SeedLearn. Um, this program is uh, about educating babies or children who work with babies in orphanages before they are three years old. It's very important that you uh, give children good care before they are three years old because that means a lot to brain development it means a lot to emotional development and it means a lot to social development. For example, uh, if children are very scared when they are babies, they may try to take control over everybody when they grow up. If you look at uh, Stalin, for example, or if you look at uh, Milosevic, oh, not, uh, not George Bush, he was just not so smart, but uh, a lot of dictators, they had this problem. Caligula. And you also have uh, some presidents uh, in southern Europe who have this problem. And uh, that's usually because they had a very large lack of care and they were very scared when they were babies. So they grow up and all they do is try to take control. They're only interested in power and they have no sense of reality. And that gives us a lot of problems. They also make a lot of uh, economic crimes. You know, uh, the world economy went down because of uh, a guy in the US who, uh, whose mother didn't care for him very much when he was a baby. 
So he, uh, he became a fraud and uh, he made all these uh, loans, you know, and the whole market broke down. So uh, <clears throat> if we don't help these children when they are young, then uh, they will pay back when they grow up. Maybe they will become criminal or antisocial or just dictators. Yeah. If, if you look at uh, why do children develop uh, attachment disorder, as it is called, that you are unable to socialize in a coherent way with other people, then you can identify a lot of risk factors before age three. And it is usually not one risk factor which makes you develop uh, attachment disorder. It is a combination of negative factors. For example, if you have a genetic disposition for being very impulsive, some families have a lot of very impulsive members, and then you have a very bad pregnancy, maybe you are born uh, prematurely, maybe your birth weight is very low, uh, that will give you brain problems later. Uh, half the children with, uh, who are born premature, they have a lot of uh, problems in social life later. And if you also have a mother who doesn't care for you, because she is uh, always away, or maybe she is violent, or maybe she is uh, on drugs, if you have these three factors together, then you have a very bad prognosis. You know, uh, all of us, we have experienced risk factors too, but not so many, not so intensely, and not so early. That's why we became normal people. Maybe some of us were born prematurely, but then we had a good mother who took care of us, mamma mia, and uh, that means that uh, we recovered. So it is a combination of many risk factors, genetic, neurologic, uh, social, uh, attachment-wise, that uh, decides how your development is going to be when you grow up. And I think when you, you look at uh, recovery, you can never say that uh, this child will become a psychopath. You can say that there is a, a, it is likely because he had so many risk factors, but maybe he doesn't anyway. I had a pair of twins, uh, and their mother was completely unable to care for them, and they became normal because they were sleeping with their feet on each other's stomach. So uh, one was the other one's attachment person, and they were inseparable, uh, but they grew up and became normal. I just saw them uh, three years ago, I worked with them uh, 25 years ago, one is a carpenter, another works in a hospital, and uh, according to uh, science, they should have been psychopaths, both of them. They didn't, because they had each other. So it's... When you work with a child, you should never say, he will be like this. You should say, uh, let's see what happens. Maybe he recovers, maybe he doesn't, uh, but I'll be there for him, okay? Yeah, I think uh, when you work with uh, disabled children or uh, abandoned children, you have two tasks. Uh, one is to uh, be realistic and accept their problems. Okay, you cannot be God, uh, you cannot save everybody, because when I look at a lot of uh, professional plans for abandoned children, the plan really says uh, we should make him normal. And that is not always uh, possible to do. So maybe we should teach him how to live with his problems. I mean, you, you see a lot of suffering, but uh, you should not go on suffering yourself. You should be realistic and, uh, and help the child uh, live the life it lives. Okay? A lot of people burn out because they uh, try to make these children completely normal. And that is uh, very, very hopeless. I mean, if, if you look at your own children, you can think sometimes, I can never make them normal. <laughs> so maybe I should just accept them the way they are and help them live with it. This is very important because then, uh, then the child will feel accepted. Uh, I say to a child, uh, you have problems reading, you will probably never be very good. And then the child says, that's what I've been saying all the time, I can't read. And then I say, okay, let's accept that, and maybe you can become a little better in five years.